Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. These words continue to apply to Christians today. Whatever you are dealing with now or have dealt with in the past does not matter because God is doing a new thing in your life. He is making a way forward, even in situations where it seems like there is no way forward. Your storm will one day be over, and you will be made new. Have you ever been stuck between a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes? Have you been stuck in a situation that seemed impossible to escape? If you have ever felt like this, you are not alone. Every one of us has felt stuck at some point in our lives. It doesn't matter where or how you feel stuck, so much as what you do in response to your situation. If you sit back and do nothing, you will have no hope of escaping your dilemma. But if you pray to the Lord for aid, you can trust that He will give you a reprieve. In Psalm 63, verses 6 through 8, David writes, On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. David was in a tough situation when he wrote these words. He was hiding in the wilderness from King Saul, who wanted to kill him. David had been promised kingship by the Lord, but at that time, he was nothing but a fugitive. And yet, David did not sit back in despair. He did not wallow in his situation or sink into hopelessness. Instead, he turned to the Lord. He clung to God for aid in this dark time and continued to praise Him. He trusted that one day, the Lord would rescue him from Saul and he would be done hiding and running. And that's exactly what happened. When Saul's time was over, the Lord took him from this earth and anointed David as the king of Israel in his place. David was transformed from a lowly fugitive to one of the greatest kings in Israel's history. And David is only one of many examples of this throughout the Bible. Hannah was in a storm of despair when she was unable to bear children. But when she turned to the Lord for aid, he gave her Samuel and more children after that. The Israelites were sure of their impending death when they were stuck between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. But the Lord parted the sea and solved both of their problems in one go. The Israelites safely crossed the sea and it crashed down behind them to destroy Pharaoh's army, thereby eliminating that threat. From the outside, each of these situations seems impossible. It was hard for David to believe that his trial with Saul would ever be over and he would really become king. Hannah had nearly given up hope of ever having a child, and the Israelites were sure that they had been led to the wilderness to die. But God was watching out for David, Hannah, and all of the Israelites. He was with them in the midst of their storm, and He did the impossible to change their lives. No matter how impossible your situation may seem, God can deliver you from it. His power is greater than anything on earth and greater than we could ever conceive. There is nothing God can't do and nothing He won't do for His beloved people. Continue clinging to the Lord, and He will deliver you. Whether you are in the eye of the storm or its aftermath, if you are one of God's children, then you have already been made new. When you decide to give your life to Christ, you are no longer the same person. You will live and act differently as a Christian than you did before. The decisions that you make in your daily life will reflect your dedication to and love for God. 
For example, instead of partying all night on Saturday and staying in bed with a hangover on Sunday morning, you might go to bed early on Saturday and spend Sunday morning worshiping God in church. Your priorities will shift and God will become the most important thing in your life above all else. Paul explains this in Ephesians 4, 22-24, when he writes, You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Paul provides a wonderful example of this in his own life. He was formerly known as Saul, and he spent his life persecuting Christians. But everything changed one day while he was on his way to Damascus, when the Lord spoke to him, saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? God then struck Saul with blindness and told him to go into the city where he would be told what to do. The Lord then instructed his servant Ananias to go to Saul and cure his blindness. From that moment on, Saul was transformed from a persecutor of Christians to a resolute Christian whose life mission was to spread the gospel. Those who knew Saul would barely have recognized him as Paul. The hatred he had for Christians was gone from his heart and replaced with love instead. He became a loyal servant of Christ who was willing to die for him. Instead of prioritizing his life over others, Paul prioritized Christ and his people over his own life. He suffered for Christ throughout his life, but he remained loyal through every trial and consistently encouraged others to do the same. When you become a Christian, it should be apparent to others that something has changed. You will naturally have different desires that align with God's Word rather than your wants. God will transform you from a sinner to a beloved child of righteousness. This transformation does not merely occur in an earthly sense, but also in a spiritual sense. Your outward character will change, but so will your very personhood. You will become new in the sense that you will be covered with Jesus' righteousness and gain eternal life through His death and sacrifice. As 2 Corinthians 5, 17-19 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to Himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are born into this world as sinners deserving of death, but Christ took that death upon Himself so that we could be covered in His righteousness and receive an undeserving reward. When we become a new person in Christ, we are reconciled to Him, and the Lord will look upon us as creatures of righteousness. Romans 6.4 further explains this when it says, We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We become new through Jesus Christ, so that we can look forward to the day that the whole world becomes new, when the Lord returns and makes all things new. The book of Revelation explains how the Lord will make things new on that day. Revelation 21, 1-4 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, 
God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. A day will come when we will shed these earthly bodies and be entirely new in the new world where God dwells with His people. If you are struggling with a difficult situation right now, you can look forward to this magnificent day when every struggle will be over for good. You can look forward to the day when all things will be made new. While the struggles of this life can seem eternal, they aren't. Everything on earth is temporary, including trials. But heaven is forever. God is forever. The new way of life will be everlasting. You will never have to say goodbye to a loved one or cry over a lost opportunity. You will never suffer from a lack of hope or become lost in despair. You will never feel alone or unloved another day in your life. My friends, I cannot tell you exactly when your storm will be over, but I can tell you that one day it will be. No matter what you are facing right now, God can handle it. Turn to Him with your trials and let Him take care of you. Give your life over to Him and allow Him to guide you where you need to go. You may have to suffer longer than you expect, but you will never suffer alone. God is right beside you, taking care of you and guiding you through His plan for you. He will end your storm when the time is right. You needn't have any doubt about that. God can do the impossible. He has done it before, and He can do it again. No matter how stuck you may feel, God can grant you escape. Just as He delivered David from the hand of Saul, just as He granted Hannah the child she so desperately longed for, and just as He parted the sea for the Israelites, he will do whatever it takes for you as well. He will do a new thing in your life. And in the meantime, you can enjoy being made new in Christ and look forward to the day when all things will be made new when the Lord comes again. Glorify in the righteousness that Christ has granted you through His death and spread His word in thanks. When you face struggles, Turn towards the Lord instead of away from Him and allow Him to do a new thing in your life. Are you worried about something? Are you scared and having terrible thoughts at the moment? Could this be due to the terrible situation going on in your life? Does it look like the enemy has shut all doors against you? Listen, you need to stop worrying and trust God to make way for you. You need to pull yourself together and stop getting anxious over everything. Today, God will help you learn to stop worrying and trust Him to make a way for you. He will renew your life and help you live peacefully and stress-free as you expect your miracle. Beloved, if God says He will make a way, believe that He will. He is not a man seeking to impress or make you feel good. He is God and holds His words in high esteem. In fact, more than His name, Look at God's word from Matthew chapter 6, verse 27. Jesus said, Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? You already know the answer to that question. So why still worry? Are you worried about your health or that of your loved ones? It could even be a sudden break in your relationship, academic failure, bills to settle, and several other troubling issues. Stressing over everything will not benefit you. When you become concerned about how to fix your problems, you start thinking, and this in turn leads to anxiety. You are not meant to handle these difficult moments on your own. He didn't create you to have all the answers to all the problems in your life. That's his business, not yours. Whatever is going on in your life, he is in there with you. You have a reliable father. He pays attention to everything, including your life. He loves you, and he is always present, even in this very moment when you think things are going out of control. He is faithful and will never leave you alone. Worrying is not the solution. It does not have the power to get you the answers you want, and it certainly will not change anything. 
Worrying only magnifies the problem and induces fears about things that do not exist. So, in the real sense, you are worrying about what does not exist. Worrying shifts your focus from God to the challenge, which is not the right thing to do. If you can prayerfully meditate on the words in Matthew chapter 6, verses 27 through 34, you will discover why God is asking you to avoid worry. He assures you that he will meet all your requests. He said you should observe the lilies and the birds of the air. They have no one to provide their basic needs for survival like you do. Nevertheless, the lilies are always radiant and the birds never lack food because he, the Lord, watches over them. If he pays this much attention to flowers and birds, how much more will he work to meet the needs of you whom he made in his image and likeness? No matter how hopeless the situation you're going through is, there is an answer in God. You do not have to carry the burdens, leave them at his feet. Psalms chapter 55 verse 22 says, cast all your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Did you hear that? You can take all your concerns about your future, job, family, and finances to him. God says you should drop all your cares, no matter how little they are. He wants you to release your mind and stop focusing on the issues. There is no worry too big or small for him to take on. He is sufficient. However, when God says we should cast every one of our needs on him, this doesn't mean they will suddenly disappear. He simply asks you not to bother about it. He is faithful in every season and will never stop being who he is. God loves you. He has not forgotten you. He allows those challenges for a reason. You may not know why now, but he knows best. Look at the story of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, commanded his soldiers to throw them into the fire for disobeying his command. Please think about this. God did not rescue them when they dragged them to the fireplace. He didn't appear when the soldiers were about to throw them into the fire. Instead, he showed up in the fire. This validates God's nature to always save his people. If you're already facing the heat of the fire, don't despair. I can assure you God will intervene. Be encouraged by this story and know that he is never too late. God wants you to depend on him. Instead of being anxious, you can take lessons from the Hebrew boys. They did not lose faith in God's ability to save them, and he did deliver them. You must understand that God is in complete control. Your situation is not taking him by surprise. He knows the exact number of the hairs on your head and keeps track of the ones that fall off when combing them. That's how much he cares about you. He knows what you are going through and is preparing for your rescue. He also has the power to make a way where you cannot see a way. God controls the earth and can command just anything he wants to happen. Is it not amazing to know that you have the same God as your father? This means that things causing you distractions are easy for him to work on. God has never failed you. Everything he does builds you to be the person he wants you to be. You can put all your concerns in his hands. He is capable of making everything work together for you. Worry will only stress you, destroy your faith in God, and open the door for the devil to inflict you with sickness. Since it is beyond your control, give it to the one who can tackle the problem. Now that you know that worrying profits nothing, you must be wondering how you can avoid the lifestyle of anxiety and begin your journey to building trust in God. You don't have to worry anymore. Here is how you can start living a life free of worry. First, you must be steadfast in trust in God. Rather than waste your time worrying and being confused, put your faith in God. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wastelands. You must still believe in God's ability to turn that negative report in your favor, heal you, and bring blessings in an area of your need. When you always bother yourself with concerns beyond your control, you become mentally drained. When you begin to panic, you are not showing trust in God. You have to build faith in God. You must gain confidence and believe God can work it out for you. This is the mindset that you should bring to the place of prayer. Beloved, there is nothing God cannot do when you pray with faith. When you pray with anxiety, you are resisting God's ability to turn that problem into a testimony. Yes, you should have concerns, but they must be dependent on believing in God in the place of prayer. You must relieve yourself of that burden in the atmosphere of prayer. Only when you surrender it to Him can He do His part in transforming that case. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You can put all your concerns in His hands and let Him handle them. The thing about bringing your burden to God in prayer is that you leave it at the feet of the King. When you do that, you no longer have to bother about them. It is no longer your problem. It becomes His. And is there anything too hard for God to do? None. The story of Hannah expounds the power of prayer instead of giving room to anxiety. Hannah could not bear a child for years. However, her mate, Anina, had children. This made her to mock Hannah. Hannah didn't fight her course, but took her pains and worries to God. During Shiloh, she went to the temple and prayed to God. God answered her and gave her Samuel, who became one of the greatest prophets that God used. After Samuel, Hannah gave birth to five children. God can do this for you if you pray with faith. You have to replace those thoughts of worry with positive thoughts. Instead of pondering how difficult your problems are, think about how these issues have created another channel for you to grow and learn. Consider how you can depend on God to take you through this season. The Word of God tells us to think only about good and noble things and bring worship to God. When you worry, you make the problem seem bigger than God's plan to fix it, and such thoughts do not glorify God. You can bring life to that situation and shut even your fears with your words. God has given you a mouth to speak against everything that you do not want to happen in your life. Another key is to fix your gaze on God's Word. You must meditate and think about it. You must not let fear make you forget who you are in Christ. You share the same inheritance as a joint heir with Christ. You must begin to work in the same authority as Jesus by professing words of faith and victory in that situation. Trust God to guide you in this season of your life. You cannot see the future, but your Father can. This means you have to submit to His divine guidance. One thing that anxiety can make you do is make wrong decisions and take the wrong steps. This is because worry can make you look for answers not in line with God's intentions. To solve this challenge, you must be careful not to fall prey to the devil's schemes. It can lead you into deeper trouble. This is why you must ask God to order your steps. God wants to make your life beautiful. He cares for you and is working everything out for your good. You must learn to focus your attention on God and not the problem. You must rely on God to give you the strength to avoid worry because you cannot do it by willpower. It's a new dawn for you. God is taking control of the issue and releasing faith and peace to your mind. He will bring His promises to pass in your life. Just keep trusting Him. Are you in a season of your life when you feel like the world has gotten the best of you? Do you feel like the battles of life have overcome you? I've been there myself. I felt like I was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Nothing seemed to be working, and those that were working were working against me. It was like I was carrying the burden of the whole world on my shoulders. I was overburdened and exclaimed, Lord, will all of these ever pass by? Today, I can testify to the Lord's goodness because He helped me. Beloved, allow me to encourage you if you're going through a similar situation right now. Everything may look dead, but God is still in control. He's not taking His eyes off you, and neither has He lost His ability to turn things around. I know it's hard to see the good when all things are speaking negatively, but you just have to trust His good will. As a child of God, your moments of trials are only temporal. Irrespective of how long that condition has lasted in your life, God is capable of putting an end to it almost in the twinkling of an eye. It doesn't cost Him anything to move in your favor and cause things to change for the better. There is hope for you in the Lord. He's good at all times and doesn't show favoritism. He's a shelter to those who find refuge in Him and the helper of the helpless. Perhaps your situation has left you feeling helpless since you've been unable to help yourself out of your struggles. Others may have tried but failed and the situation got worse. Don't be terrified. God is still on His throne and is not incapacitated. He is a fortress and a strong tower, a stronghold and a source of strength amidst your troubles. Those who are anchored in the Lord are not taken abreast by the rough days on earth. They experience what's called the joy of the Lord. This is a mystery that science cannot explain because even in the fire and lion's dens, they still rejoice. 
God is worth your fellowship. In His presence, there is fullness of joy and life everlasting. Living in His presence will give you the strength to pull through any situation. It's in His presence that Jesus strengthens you to do all things, even to withstand your days of trials. If you have normalized ghosting God when things seem not to be working in your favor, then you may think that I'm here to cajole you into trusting Him. There is this assurance that comes from spending quality time with God amidst the storm. It comes with a deep, unexplainable peace and a sense of security. It can't be explained because it's better experienced. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. You see, none of his good promises have ever failed. He always fulfills them. He does not joke with his word and those who trust in it. You should prioritize God because he is the solution to every problem that you may have. God is obligated to work on behalf of those who stay true to Him. However, for those who are unfaithful and curse Him in the face of opposition, He owes nothing. You may feel like you've lost completely. You may feel like you're unable to make use of opportunities that knock at your door, or that you've wasted so much time and don't know what to do. Have you heard of the story of Joshua when he prayed to God to let the sun stay still? That is the God you serve, a God that holds both times and seasons in His hands. I won't ask you how much time you've lost because that doesn't matter to God. I won't ask you how many opportunities slipped out of your hands because that does not count before God. I have experienced Him as my restorer and I know that He still restores. No matter what you have lost, God will restore it if you believe. Saul, who later became the Apostle Paul, had wasted so much time. He had used his youthful days on the wrong course, persecuting the church that he was now ready to propagate. In the human sense, he had gone too far and had lost his actual calling, but God did something remarkable. He restored the time he had lost. He lived to the full fulfillment of his purpose and reached the highest mark of his calling. He finished his work and waited for God to call him home. I don't know if what you need is restoration, but I know that irrespective of what you need, my God will meet you at the point of your expectation. Sometimes these battles become a part of our lives. You've lived so long with them that they now know your address. You may be so worried about going to bed and rising in the morning because you're afraid of living another day to keep fighting the same battles. I believe this was the case with blind Bartimaeus. Blindness is one of the worst ailments one could ever have in life because sight is primary in life. He woke up each day to the same plight and with questions in his heart. He probably questioned God countless times if he was suffering for his sins or that of his parents. Yet when he heard that Jesus was passing, he didn't question the master for the cause of his predicament. Rather, he cried out for mercy. Sometimes the hardship and struggles are meant to bring you closer to God. The reason why God will not leave you to perish in your problems is that His name is at stake. He'll do it for His name to be glorified. God will deliver you from the grip of death. That terminal disease will not terminate your existence. He will restore your health for His name's sake. When it feels like time is running out, you should remember that you have come too far to turn around. Hold on, because God will work it out. If dead bones that were dried and biologically considered to have lost the essence of life could come back to life and become an army, then your case is no exception. Consider a woman who is in labor. Her birth pangs don't last forever. Although the duration varies from one person to the other, as soon as the baby comes, the pain is almost forgotten. The same is about to happen in your life. God is about to smile upon you. He'll turn every night into a day. As His glory radiates all around you, every dark situation will become light. The moment He steps in, your pains will be forgotten. God is set to do a new thing. It's your season of great turnaround, and I believe that you will live to testify. In place of dryness, you will receive abundance. In place of shame, you will receive double glory. In place of tears, you will receive laughter.
Instead of sitting back in the spirit of defeat, I need you to get up in the spirit of joy and thanksgiving. Get up from the lowly places where the enemy has placed you and give thanks unto the Lord because he is set to do something new and tangible in your life. King David was testifying of a day of deliverance in Psalm 126 verse 1 where he said, When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. This will be your testimony. When the Lord sends you the help you have been looking for, you'll be amazed. When He sends you answers to the prayers that seem like they were falling on deaf ears, you will be wowed. You'll be promoted at the time you least expect it. You'll begin to wake up in the morning with shouts of joy because you will not wake up to face the same old issues again. Maybe you are like the man, Blind Bartimaeus, whose predicament became a qualifier for his personality. Beloved, I don't care what names people have called you over the years. It may be a failure, loser, stagnation, ill health, name it. God will change your situation and give you a new name. As He restores you, He will erase the memories of the negative tags that accompanied your situation. You are the Lord's redeemed and His beloved. Every other name is fading away right now. You'll no longer be a borrower. You'll be a lender. You will lend to nations, and they will rise and call you the blessed of the highest. Miracles will no longer be scarce in your life. You'll begin to see new miracles every morning. Everyone may have declared your condition to be permanent, as there seems to be no possible solution for it. But listen to what the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 49, verses 24 through 26. Can plunder be taken from warriors or captives rescued from the fierce? But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you, and your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their flesh, and they will be drunk on their blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord for you today. This will be your reality. Even if you're suffering as a result of your violation of natural laws or as a result of a sin you committed, God will destroy the lawful grounds on which the enemy is tormenting your life. This means that nothing can stop God from changing the narratives in your life. He said in His word, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Beloved, this is an open invitation to you. Bring all of your burdens, all of it, and lay them at the feet of the Master. Come and receive rest for your soul. He will take your yoke upon Him. The sun is rising again, and you will sing a new song. Like Hannah, you will sing a song of gratitude from the depths of your soul. This is my prayer for you. You will stay in the presence of God until your change manifests physically. Oh, hallelujah! Have you ever been in a situation or a state of mind where you wished you had another opportunity to start all over? Have you ever felt like replaying some scenarios so you could correct some of your mistakes and do things a bit differently? If your answer to these questions is yes, then I've got good news for you. You know what? In Christ, there is a new privilege for everyone who cares to start anew. There is a fresh start open to everyone who regrets some mistakes of the past and who feels like winding back the clock. Now is a fresh start, a time to rejoice, a time to start afresh, because it is your new beginning. The scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Therefore, starting afresh is possible. And it is only possible in Christ Jesus. A new beginning with God means a new life. A new covenant and a new purpose. Everyone has at one time or another wished they could rewind some moments of life in their past and make better choices. 
As humans, we cannot go back in time. But we can start all over again, forgetting the past. Now, let's look at some ways to experience a new beginning. First, there is a need to recognize your need for a new beginning and prepare for it. You may have sunk deep in sin all through the year. You may have disappointed God and yourself. Perhaps you've drifted from purpose. You may be afraid of going back to the secret place you've once abandoned. You may be afraid that your spiritual life may no longer be the same again. As much as you desire a new beginning with God, you need to recognize the need for that new beginning. Just desiring a new beginning is not enough. You have to point out or write down the reasons you need this new beginning. You can desire someone or something without necessarily needing them. Therefore, it gives you no extra push for you strive to get to that particular thing. Ask yourself a question. Do I need a new start or a new beginning with God? And why do I need it? If you can be able to answer these questions, then you are a step away from rejoicing in your new beginning. God searches the heart and he is interested in the state of your heart. Do you desire a new beginning because you think you deserve it? Or do you desire a new beginning because you miss your fellowship with God and you need back that intimacy? Imagine if the prodigal son had come back to the father because he felt he deserves everything good from his father and not with the repentant heart. Listen, there may not be a new beginning until you begin to prepare for it. God from his word has promised us a new beginning. He has promised us beauty for ashes, but we have a role to play in bringing it to pass. Never stop praying. Never stop studying God's word and never stop worshiping. Connect with God and watch him help you start again and replace your ashes with beauty. The recognition of the need for a new start is what helps you prepare for it. In addition to that, you need to know that a new beginning is possible no matter how far you've strayed from the track. Sometimes life and people throw us into the web of believing that a new beginning is impossible or that our past defines who we are. People make the mistake of pushing us into believing that we must learn to live with certain consequences for the rest of our lives. If only that were true, but it isn't. A new beginning is possible, and it is possible only in God. Remember from the Bible, old things are passed away. Old things are dead and buried if you can label them as old things and then embrace the newness in Christ. With God, a new beginning can be at any time. It doesn't have to be the beginning of a new year, the beginning of a new age in your life, or the beginning of anything new on earth. It has to do with when you are ready to embrace him and let go of the old thing, the old mistakes, the old habits, and the old you in general. As much as you desire a new beginning, God desires the same thing for you. He is actually waiting in anticipation to see you walk a step toward him in surrender, and he is ready to pour all of himself into you again, disregarding your old and dirty past. He desires this new beginning and relationship as much as you do. God is always ready. Therefore, the only person hindering you in your new beginning is you. Quit listening to the lies from the pit of hell, the lies of the voice within you, and the lies from the world. The Bible says in Revelation 3.20, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. 
God is still in the business of knocking on the hearts of men and waiting for those who will hear his voice and open up. Why not open up to him today? A new beginning is only possible in Christ Jesus, not outside of him. Sometimes we look for help elsewhere when we have our ultimate helper in Christ Jesus. The problem sometimes is not in our past mistakes, but in the deceit we entangle ourselves in that we can source for help in various places. As a Christian, no matter how far you go to seek help in starting afresh, you cannot be satisfied until you have traced yourself back to your root, Jesus. It can be very discouraging to always return to God every time you've strayed. It feels like you're disturbing him or that he's tired of you. But the truth is, God is never tired of you. He knows that he is your only source of dependence and he is always waiting with arms wide open. Do not run to the world for help. Do not seek a new beginning outside of Christ. Do not believe the world's alternative for God. Relocating to a new location won't fill the void. Changing all your contacts and cutting off from old friends will only aggravate your height of loneliness. A new relationship, a new partner, or a new job will only make you feel better temporarily. A new beginning of peace and joy can only be gotten in Christ Jesus. He alone knows you from your mother's womb and knows your future. Therefore, he knows how best to align you into that new beginning in life that you deserve. Anything outside of Christ will definitely be outside his purpose and will for your lives. Since Jesus Christ is the only name you know and trust, therefore you should trust him to help you start afresh regardless of the past. He is not a mere friend. Therefore, trust your secrets and fears are safe with him, and he will help you start again. Lastly, master the act of forgiveness and let go of unforgiveness. Forgiveness means letting go and unforgiveness means holding on to grudges. Unforgiveness has cost people more than they ever thought it would. It has its way of dragging one down to a place of hurt, agony, pain, hatred, envy, and bitterness. It keeps giving you reasons to remain there in the place of hurt. Oftentimes, you don't realize how deeply it has consumed and destroyed you until it finally leaves you in a state of regret. To start anew, you must forgive. Forgive that friend spouse, relation, and even the church member that spoke wrongly against you. Likewise, forgive yourself. You need to stop being too harsh on yourself. Forgiveness opens you up for a new beginning. It lightens up your heart of every heavy burden, getting you ready to receive something new. Remember, you can't hold something in your palms and receive with the same palm. Until you can come to terms with letting go of past hurts and those who hurt you, you are far from starting afresh. God is ready to forgive you as much as you forgive others. No matter the hurt, let go. Even if you've been accused wrongly, let go and let God be the judge. Leave him to avenge your cause and you will be amazed at how well he can restore your wasted years. Stop hating yourself to think that you are the cause of all your misfortunes in life or the cause of other people's misfortunes in life. Learn to let go and heal. God is desperately waiting to draw you out of the well of self-pity and unforgiveness and give you a new life. Are you broken and shattered? He is more than willing to remold you into a beautiful masterpiece. He is willing to give you a new direction and purpose. In this new season of your life, you will rejoice. Trust God to help you through your healing process of hurt and keep believing that it is possible. 
The scripture, speaking in Isaiah 43, 18-19 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is reminding you from this passage of scripture that he is doing a new thing and he wishes that you forget the former things and focus on the new thing he is doing now. When you keep focusing on the past, you will lose sight of the newness before you. If only you can shift your gaze in the spirit and shut your ears to the voices in the world, you will be able to perceive the new thing he is about to do. The prodigal son had a new beginning. Rahab the harlot had a golden new beginning. Though Rahab came from a place of deep brokenness, God rewrote her story and her lineage that has been known for prostitution, got a new identity. Her name was included in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Only in Christ can such a thing be possible. Dearly beloved, your past has no part in what God has in store for you. Only play your path by coming to Him. Believe in Him and you will see the manifestation. You may be that prodigal son that has strayed far from home and endured whatsoever the world pushes your way. You may have been dining with pigs whereas you have your throne and palace. God is calling you to the place of repentance. He is beckoning you to come to your rightful throne as an heir of the kingdom. Why waste away in the web of pride and unrepentance? A banquet has been arranged for your rejoicing. All God wants is for you to see him as a father once more and not a consuming fire. God is in the business of making new things and opening new doors every day in your career relationship, or life generally. He is abundantly able to heal and restore. Also, he delights in the prosperity of his children. However, sometimes you believe the opposite because you can't see any sign that God is working. But your inability to see him working does not limit his ability. Your small thoughts of God do not make him little either. It might result from being too focused on the mountain before you or being too comfortable at the level you find yourself in. Whichever case it is, it is important to always leave your heart open before God so that you don't miss the opportunity that he sets before you. It doesn't matter if you have missed an opportunity in time past. Today is another day, so utilize the opportunity set before you. So what are the signs that God is opening new doors in your life? First. God will take you through a season of preparation. During this season, you may experience various challenges but will grow personally. It can involve developing character traits such as patience, strength, faith, and wisdom. It may also include gaining knowledge, skills, or experiences that are important to unlock the door God is opening to you. It can also be a time when God points out your weakness especially the one that can stand as a hindrance to your next level. For instance, a lazy person might be trusting God for a job. How does he intend to maintain that job with a lazy attitude? But then God begins to work on you. He orchestrates situations that will compel you to dust off the lazy spirit or learn the hard way how to be diligent. God knows that laziness will be a barrier to maintaining that job. So he will take him through a series of training, and when he is fit, he will pave the way for the job. This season can be tough, but that won't speed up the process. So you must exercise faith in God. However, always have it in your mind that whatever God does is in your best interest. Prophet Isaiah has been sharing the word of the Lord in the first five chapters of his book. However, in chapter six, God pointed out his weakness. And the prophet said in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5, Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. That was the prophet's weakness. 
However, God pointed it out, healed him, and that marked the beginning of a new dawn in his ministry. The period and nature of the season of preparation are not always the same for everybody. It may involve periods of meditation, study, or even waiting. However, in whatever form it comes, the most important is that you are built into your full potential and in alignment with God's plan for your life. Always stay open to God's guidance. Seek wisdom and trust in the preparation process. It is a season of self-discovery, a greater understanding of yourself and a deeper connection with God. It is an important phase you must pass through before entering that new door. Another way to recognize that God is opening a new door is that he will drop new ideas in your heart. It can come as a desire or an instruction. If it comes as a desire, you can easily follow through because it is linked to your passion. But if yours happens to be an instruction, you might struggle with obedience. That's because not every instruction from God is palatable to our carnal nature. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's ways are higher than ours. So instead of trying to understand all the instructions he gives you, ask God to help you trust and obey him. The idea that comes to your heart might not look so significant, but like a mustard seed, it will grow into something beautiful. When a mustard seed is planted, Although it starts small, it grows into a large tree, providing shelter and support for birds. An idea or instruction from God may not appear to produce a big result until you obey. Obedience is a very key principle to entering into the door God has opened for you. Abraham didn't know that to become the father of many nations, he had to pass the test of killing his only son the task of killing your only child, considering the number of years it took you to bring forth that child, is a very difficult instruction to obey. Yet Abraham trusted God. Certain doors won't open unto you until you obey God's instruction. Sometimes you won't see the blessings awaiting you until you take step out in faith. Today, Listen for the instruction and ideas God is dropping in your heart and do them, whether they make sense or not. When God separates you from the wrong relationship, this is another sign that he is opening a new door. However, God won't separate and leave you hanging. He will also connect you with the right people. Having a close friend break off a relationship or your business partner back out can be very devastating and God knows and sees your pain. However, there are many things God protects you from by allowing certain things to happen. God's love for you is great. This is why he always ensures that you are shielded from evil. You might not understand it at the main time, but as time goes on, you will understand why you had to let those relationships go. Some friends can't be with you when that opportunity comes. They might become too jealous to handle your success or might not give you the right support that you need for the journey. They don't have to be bad people, but God sees what you can't see and knows what is best for you. When you find yourself in this situation, ask God to strengthen you and open your eyes to the relationships are conducive to your progress. It is best to surrender to God when you have no control over a situation. If you are calm and prayerful, you will discern the door he is opening up for you. That business deal that looks like a great deal now might not favor you later on. But you can't discern this yourself because man judges based on what they can see. But God knows the end from the beginning. Why don't you rest in him and know that he is preparing the right one for you? This season might be painful, but it is necessary. To come into this new door, excess baggage has to go. Another sign to pay attention to is the confirmations that he sends to you. God won't put you in a position where you are confused about what he is currently doing in your life. 
He will try to bring your attention to his dealings with you so that you don't miss out on what he is doing in that season. One of the ways God calls your attention to what he is doing in your life is through the inward witness. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 says, The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. You can fight it, but it won't stop functioning as a guide. Sometimes it comes as intuition, prompting, peace, or desire. With the inward witness, you will feel troubled when you want to make the wrong decision, but you are at peace when moving in the right direction. However, it is only possible to discern this when your heart is still and quiet. The human spirit has been designed to understand what God is saying at every point in time. But if you are too hasty or lousy to listen to that voice within you, you might miss it. God also sends his confirmation through dreams. Yeah, your daily activities can manipulate your dreams. You can have a dream because you watched a movie or thought about something. However, dreams are still channels God uses to call your attention to what he is doing. Many have missed an important season of their lives because they failed to take their dreams seriously. Checking through the inner witness is important in discerning which dream is from God. Whenever you are disturbed about a dream you had, pray and meditate on it to believe God for more revelation. It might just be that God is opening a door onto you and showing you what to do. Sometimes these dreams, God don't seem like a big deal until you have spent time praying and meditating on them. Only then will you know how important they are. King Pharaoh had a dream and did all he could to get the meaning of that dream. He must have thought deeply that the dream was very important, so he didn't treat it casually. If he had thrown the dream aside, they wouldn't have been able to prevent the evil from coming to pass. God can also convey his word through those around you. It could be through your friends, or pastor, or even partner. This is why you are always encouraged to surround yourself with the right set of people, those who can discern the voice of God over your life. Also, don't look down on anybody. God can use anyone as a vessel. If your six-year-old daughter walks up to you and gives you a word from the Lord, don't doubt it. David was little when he confronted Goliath. No one, not even his brothers, believed he was the one sent to deliver them from the hands of the Philistine because he didn't look like it physically. You don't always have to wait for the spectacular. That door might open from where you least expect. In addition to paying attention to these signs, let what is in the past be forgotten. And don't let it hold you down from reaching out to your breakthrough. One of the reasons people don't notice the doors that God has opened unto them is that they dwell so much on what had happened in the past, and they lose sight of what God is currently doing. Yesterday is gone, so let your focus be on today, because every day God sets a new opportunity before you. Always open yourself to the possibilities of more. Don't stay comfortable in a place for too long. Be grateful for where you are, but know there is always an opportunity for more. If you had a promotion some months ago, there's still more that can be achieved now. When God opens a new door, leave your comfort zone and reach out for it. When you hear the phrase, God's mercy, what first comes to mind? Is it undeserved kindness, forgiveness, compassion, or grace? All of these words are accurate descriptions of God's character when we talk about His mercy. He is compassionate, gracious, forgiving, and loves freely without expecting anything in exchange for His love for you. The psalmist emphasized this point in many scriptures saying, Give thanks unto the Lord for His mercy and loving kindness endures forever. God's mercy is why the earth is still rotating around the sun. It is why we are still alive. If God dealt with us according to our sins, no one would be spared. We are alive today because His mercies are new every morning, even in 2022. He is a merciful God and will not renounce Himself because of what we do or fail to do. Lamentations 3, 22-23 says, 
The unfailing love of the Lord never ends. By his mercies we have been kept from destruction. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each day. The great news about God's mercy is that it is for everyone, the unbeliever, the believer, the righteous, and the unrighteous alike. It is this attribute of God that makes him able to send down the rain on both sinners and the righteous. It is an attribute that makes him not punish us as our offenses deserve. I have seen a lot of believers who feel God is being unfair for not punishing the unbelievers for the sins they commit willingly. I have also seen believers weep when they realize God has forgiven them of a sin they thought was unforgivable. Don't ever run away from God after making a mistake or falling into sin. He is loving and compassionate and will willingly forgive you and accept you back as his child. God is not mad at you. When you begin to feel that God is mad at you for a mistake you made and that he will never forgive you, know that the enemy is trying to keep you away from your father. What have you done or failed to do that has been hunting you since the year began? If you realized your mistake and ask for forgiveness, you are forgiven. Do not let the enemy imprison you with shame or guilt. Psalm 103.12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. God will not deal with you according to your past sins. No, he erases them and opens a new chapter for you whenever you ask for forgiveness. He wants you to wake up to a love that enables you to live right, not out of compulsion or guilt, but because you are grateful for his unconditional love. He wants you to be aware of his compassion so that you do not run or hide when you fall into sin as Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. The truth is, God sees your efforts. He sees your attempts and willingness to live right. That is why he keeps renewing his mercies every morning. He continues to renew your strength. Through his unfailing love, he keeps giving you more reasons why you should keep trying and not give up on yourself. Imagine that you are the parent of a beautiful child who keeps going back to the mud after being bathed. Would you pick up the child and dump him or her in the refuse bin? Maybe you would disown the child and say, Well, dear child, I have tried being patient with your dirty habits, but not anymore. If you cannot stay clean, I will stop loving you. Of course you wouldn't, and God is a much better parent than you are. I know the enemy tries to convince you that some of the trials you encounter are God's way of punishing you for the sins you committed in the past. Come on, God keeps no record of wrongs. His love for you is perfect. Every day he looks forward to having a new page turned for you, especially where you may have fallen short. When you are on the right path, he looks forward to continuing with you. It is because of God's mercy that Jesus Christ died for your sins. As a result, you can't be angry at him for being patient with unbelievers. After all, you were once one. There is no point in becoming puffed up in pride or behaving in a self-righteous manner. You know that none of us gets it right all the time. We still falter at times. If anything, the undeserved kindness of God should help you be humble. Knowing that you are loved despite your imperfections should make it easy to extend the same love to others. It's time to come back home. One of my favorite parables in the Bible is the prodigal son. Luke 15, 11 through 32 tells the story of a young man who walked up to his father, requested his inheritance, and went away to a distant land where he squandered everything he had been given. It is recorded that after he spent all he had, there was a severe famine in the country. After much suffering, he came to his senses and decided to go back to his father and plead for forgiveness. Unlike the cold welcome the young man expected, his father received him with joy and threw a lavish feast to celebrate his return. The father said to his servants, For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is a typical illustration of how God feels whenever you come back to him. He does not hold against you the amount of time you spent in the world or the talents and gifts that you wasted or misused on irrelevant things. Instead, 
he welcomes you back home with open arms as his child, not a servant. My brothers and sisters, I do not want you to dig down into the past trying to find out what you did or failed to do, but I want you to know that if you have been away from home, it's time to return. Your father awaits you. That voice telling you that you have been rejected, written off, or can never be pardoned is the voice of Satan. You know his schemes too well to believe the lies he fabricates. Micah 7.18 says, Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. Beloved, return to God who pardons your sin out of pure and perfect love. To all who have wandered away from your Maker, come back home. His faithfulness has kept you this far, and by His mercy the repercussions of your sins have not consumed you. The Word of God says the wages of sin is death. If you have been wondering why you are still alive after all the ungodly things you have done, I want you to know that it is not because God is asleep but because he is compassionate and does not stay angry with you forever. The enemy is a deceiver. First, he makes you feel so guilty that you never think of returning to God. Second, he makes you feel like a hypocrite. None of these scenarios are healthy for you, and they are not from God. They are all cunning strategies the enemy uses to keep you outside Christ because he knows that only those who are in him cannot be condemned. And just when you begin to think that God's mercy is all about forgiveness of sin, you realize that it is beyond that. When blind Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus, Thou, son of David, have mercy on me, he was not only seeking the forgiveness of his sins, he wanted to be healed. When God shows a man mercy, he relieves him of his sufferings. He shows him kindness in a way that the man could never have merited. God wants you free from the bondage of sin. He loves you and that is why he is so patient with you. Now is the time to take appropriate recognition of God's mercy. Now is the time to cry for mercy. What area of your life is in dire need of God's show of compassion? Is it your health, your relationships, or your finances? As God releases his loving kindness towards you, you will be delivered from all of your sufferings. You will be made whole in your body and your needs will be met according to God's riches. Love God and live free of the fear that he will withdraw his love from you if you make mistakes. Rejoice in him, and again I say rejoice. Where you fall, do not hesitate to turn to God so that he may raise you again. This is the secret of the righteous man.